Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. And in this episode, I wanna talk about strategies to still be able to edit your film after it has reached picture lock. Now, before I fully get into it though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already, that way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So, let's talk about this, right? As filmmakers, you know, picture lock is when the editing phase of post-production is complete. That means the timing of the movie will not change, right? Or so, in theory. It means everything's now locked off, uh, you know, and it can go to color correction, it can go to sound design, the FX, you know, uh, can be completed and all that stuff, right? The, it can then be in that final phase of things. Well, the fact of the matter is, like, it's, it's very limiting in that sense because, okay, to, to go through this thing and then it's like, okay, cool, that's it, it's done, boom, move on. And in theory, I understand why it exists, but I think it's a myth that's, that is adopted by people of inexperience, sadly, right? Because ultimately, you never really reach picture lock until the release of the movie. Because as, let's say, sound design comes in, it might spark ideas and you might be like, ooh, let's change the timing of this so we can get a longer reaction or whatever, whatever the case may be, right? I'll give you a, you know, an example in my movie. So we reached picture lock, um, quote unquote, but in thinking about it, there's one scene that happens a little bit later that would benefit if we just moved it earlier in the film and then at the end of the movie, I just wanted to get just a better shot for the final, final ending before we went to credits. And so, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do that. And I, so I reshot that and so forth. And it adds a few, you know, a split second or something like that, right? But it changes the timing. And in that sense, I'm in a place where luckily it's not a lot of changes because, you know, all in all, at the end of the day, moving a scene from one place to another, it's still going to have the same stuff essentially. It's going to mess up. The only thing that it really messes up is the music side of, of things, but it doesn't mess up color correction. It doesn't really mess up the sound design um, in, in that particular sense. So that's fine. Uh, and certainly for the ending shot, it doesn't really mess up anything that much because it just kind of extends, it just pushes back the credits. At that point already, the, you know, the music is playing and so forth and carries us out. So that's not really a big deal. You just extend the music at the end to match the end of the credits. But overall, you know, even if it was slightly bigger changes, ultimately what you want is to be able to track those changes. So that way, when the people that are working on that picture lock, that initial picture lock version, when the time comes, they know exactly what they need to shift. And one of my big strategies has always been, okay, you know, if I'm gonna make any changes, then I have an export out version with time code, okay, on it baked into that video. So, that way they're working off of that one and we have that we, we, we can reference the same time code and any time I make an, a change, I'm breaking that video as if it's one clip and so we can see and spot the break in that time code exactly where it happened, where we come back in, if something got trimmed or whatever. So you can, that to me single-handedly when you can just track those changes in that way, game changer. Because it allows you then to very easily be like, okay, you know, uh, shift this, you know, this much, right? And for however many times you need to. And that's really all it takes. Um, you know, I think the, the reason why it scares people 
is A, because it's a myth that's been perpetuated, and B, because unfortunately, if they don't have the experience, the experience becomes just a nightmare. But when you're strategic about it and go into it knowing like, hey, let me, let me have a system in place so I can track those exact changes, then it's not a problem. You know? Uh, it, or it doesn't have to be this nightmare headache scenario. And that's really what it's all about. It's as simple as that, really. And for me, like I said, it's just having that export out version as a reference point so I know of the changes that are being made. And then it's not a big deal. That's it. So I hope this serves you well. If you have any further questions or thoughts of your own, please comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. Would love to hear from you. Likewise, if you appreciate what I do and think you would benefit from more direct interactions but can't afford my coaching sessions, well, that's what my Patreon page is for, patreon.com slash philcvtech. There's various tiers of support there where we get to interact more directly. And uh, likewise, I have books and movies and other things out there. If you want to support me that way, you know, grab a copy of any of the stuff that I've created. By supporting that stuff, it helps support this because, you know, in creating that art that I do, I can then talk about it here and share the lessons, right? So it's very symbiotic in that way. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and hope to see you next time.